Hello, welcome to another SAPERSON webinar. Today we have a presenter from the University of Wisconsin at Madison. And with that, I'll hand the floor over. Sounds good. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Peidi, and uh, I'm a scientist at the TOPS lab from University of Wisconsin, Madison. So here I would like to present one of our studies that was about quantifying autonomous vehicle pedestrian interactions at uh, intersections. So this was sponsored by SaferSim. And uh, let's get started with the motivation of uh, conducting this study. So basically, there are some concerns over the behavior of uh, autonomous vehicles, also known as AVs, while you're interacting with different road users. We would want to know how these vehicles interact with, let's say, other human-driven vehicles, pedestrians, bicyclists, to make sure that they are safe and they actually behave very well while interacting with other road users. Second, currently most studies or existing studies, they mainly focus on AV behavior through limited field experiments or AV-centric naturalistic driving. This means that you know they do uh, experiments in closed track or like a simulation. So we would like to have some experiments that are conducted on open roads to test the ability of AV while you're interacting with different road users. In addition, the current studies, uh, they do not address AV road interactions, especially with vulnerable road users. So vulnerable road users, usually they include, let's say pedestrians, bicyclists, and because of their vulnerability, they are often at risk while involving crashes and you know other incidents on the road. So when we introduce AVs on the road, we want to make sure that those vehicles, those new road users, they can interact responsibly with those vulnerable road users and do not, let's say, impose additional risks to those we are used. And those are some motivations of uh, this study. And uh, we have several objectives in this study. The first is to collect a real world AV VRU interaction data on public roads. This means we will have the trajectories of the AVs and the behavior of those vehicles while they are interacting with pedestrians and bicyclists. And such data can help us better understand the behavior of AVs while they are interacting with VRUs. Second, we would like to develop data preparation techniques to extract AV VRU interactions because there are, let's say, when you drive or when the AV is driving on the road, it will, because we don't have too many pedestrians or bicyclists. So how do we extract all those encounters efficiently and uh, cost friendly? That's something we would like to address and uh, to develop some techniques to address these challenges. Lastly, we would like to analyze the behavior of AVs while they are interacting with VRUs to see, for example, how does the speed of the AV change? Or like, you know, how does the acceleration of AV change while the AV is interacting with VRUs? So those are some objectives of this study. And uh, here I would like to give a brief introduction of the vehicle, the AV we used in this study. So it is autonomous shuttle. Uh, we call it Badger, and uh, it has several sensors to help it navigate through traffic. So basically, it is uh, it has six seats, and uh, it requires one operator. Oh, I'm sorry, two operators, one on the driver, uh, one in the driver seat, another in the passenger seat to operate the vehicle. It doesn't necessarily need a driver, but because Wisconsin law requires that the driver's seat must be occupied by a person. That's why we put an operator in the driver's seat. And um, 
there is a button in the AV and if you push that button, it will enable the autonomous mode to let the vehicle drive it by itself. And you can always take over by press that button again to let the operator or driver to take over the control of the vehicle. So basically this vehicle has multiple sensors to help it sense the traffic and make certain decisions. It has one GPS unit that provides location and speed of the vehicle, three radar units and one or two LiDAR units. All those five sensors can help the AV detect objects around the vehicle's path, such as including both dynamic objects, such as vehicles, pedestrians, and static objects, such as a trash can, curb and other infrastructure. It also has two cameras that providing videos of the vehicle's front view and the operator view, which I will explain later. But basically those are several, you know, uh, main sensors used by this vehicle. And after we use this vehicle to collect the data, we have a software called a visualizer to help us to visualize and analyze the data. So it has three main components. The, on the left, you can see the trajectory of the vehicle or, or the AV in the middle. If, if you click one of these trajectory points, you can have the view from the camera as well as the sensor output from the LiDAR and radar to help you, you know, check the surrounding environment of the vehicle. On the right side, you can see the other detailed information about the AV, including latitude, longitude, speed, heading. And this table here gives you the information of the objects detected by the vehicle, including the width of the object distance from the AV to the object and the angle from the AV to the object, etc. So if you actually, let's say, click one of these uh, waypoints or like trajectory points, you are able to see what the AV detects. For example, if you can see this purple cross, so this shows the location of the AV right now. And this orange or yellow dot gives you the object detected by the AV, which is a vehicle in this case. And you can also see it detects the vehicle on the 387 cycle. And it gives you other information, for example, the distance from the AV to this vehicle as a current cycle and other information. You can also see the location of the AV as a cycle, as well as the speed and heading of this vehicle. So here is a short video of you know how we use this software to kind of verify the information while the AV was operating. So basically, if you go through different cycles, you can see how the AV drives itself, and uh, you know if it encounters other road users or objects. So for example, if you, uh, one second, if we pause here, you can, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, around here, you can see it detects some objects from this uh, orange line. And uh, this, yes, and this shows you how we use this software to kind of verify the environment and you know the driving conditions while the AV was operating. And uh, here is the, the experimental design of this study. So basically, we conducted our experiments in the city of Racine uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, this is the map of the Racine, part of the Racine we have used. And we created two routes. Those are two loop routes and uh, overall they cover four uh, all-way stop intersections and uh, 11 two-way stop uh, intersections. We conducted our experiments in 2023 over three days and we had four operators. 
they all have valid US driver license and uh, had normal or corrected to normal vision. So we call them operators, not necessarily drivers because you know the job is to make sure that the AV is operating in a safe environment. And if there is some, you know, uh, let's say emergency or like they feel it's necessary to take over, they will initiate that button and the take over uh, take the control over, but most of the time they can be just like the operator and uh, the let the AV operate itself. And uh, here are some data we have uh, collected during the experiments. So there are two types of data we mainly used in this study. The first is log data. So basically log data is a text in a text format and it's not very constructed which i will talk about how do we you know convert it into a better format later but basically from these text data we can get information including location dynamics and the detections from the av so this is a data source we have been used as well as a camera data so it provides us two ca uh, cameras the first is uh, a camera that is facing the front of the vehicle it's like a dash camera and the second is facing the operator so basically we have the front view as well as the operator view uh, here we mainly used the camera that is uh, facing uh, the direction of the driving like the front view camera to help us to detect pedestrians and uh, bicyclists so in terms of uh, data preparation, as I said, so the log data is unstructured. Uh, unstructured. So you can see that it has a lot of, I would say, unnecessary information. So it's hard to analyze and uh, does not necessarily you know, provide us very helpful information. So we have developed a Python script to help us parse such data into a structured uh, format. Basically, we divided it into two types of data. The first is location and the vehicle dynamics data. This gives us the time uh, of the cycle as well as the uh, lat uh, latitude, longitude, and the speed of the vehicle, as well as the heading. The second is the detection data, which gives us the information of objects detected by the vehicle. So you may ask that, you know, this looks very similar as what we have seen in the visualizer. So why don't we use the visualizer itself? Um, yeah, I think that's uh, we, because it's kind of packaged by the, uh, I would say the manufacturer, the visualizer. So we don't really have a way of use that information directly. And by using this data parser, it will be more, I would say, flexible and we can do whatever you know we want. So I think this gives us higher flexibility and that's why we want to use the unstructured log data directly and uh, to convert it into a structured format to help us analyze the behavior of AV. So here is a quick, you know, a description of the data uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, extracted from the log. So basically it gave us the location, speed, and uh, the time as well as the mode. The mode is uh, the driving mode of the vehicle which is either automated or manual, which means that if the vehicle is driven by the software or like it's driven by a human. So use this information, we can help us to analyze the behavior of the AV while the AV is interacting with the pedestrians or bicyclists. So we now have the information of the vehicle itself, but we still don't know, you know, as I said, uh, when, you, when the AV is driving in racing, it doesn't, really, you know, meet a pedestrian or a bicyclist very often. So we need to figure out how do we extract all those encounters very efficiently. So here, what we did was that we applied a computer vision technique to extract all those pedestrians or detect those pedestrians from the video data we have collected. So basically here we used Yolo V8, which is a lightweight framework for object detection. 
So if you put an image into this framework, it will tell you, you know, uh, it will create a bounding box around the objects you would like to detect. So here we mostly cared about uh, pedestrians, which is under the person category. So here you can see it has this red bounding box as well as the confidence level, which is means how confident the model is about to say this object is a person. So right now it has a 0.7 confidence uh, score and we set 0.5 here just to filter out all those, let's say images that we uh, we, we would like, uh, uh, we think there is a pedestrian or a bicyclist in those image. And uh, this is the uh, process of how do we, how we did the detection of uh, pedestrians. So basically for each video, we kind of, uh, we uh, extracted all those because video is multiple frames, right? We extracted all those frames from one video and then we put it into the Python script, uh, use YOLO V8 and it helped us, you know, to let's say we have 1000 frames and uh, the, this script will tell us, okay, like uh, 10 of those, you may have uh, a pedestrian, right? And then, because sometimes this algorithm does make mistake, right? He, it will false classify some objects as persons. That's something we noticed. So that's why we applied a manual verification again to make sure that those objects are indeed pedestrians. But since in this step, we only have a few frames. So it will be very easy to do the manual verification. And uh, here I would give you, after this, we have filed five AV variant actions. And uh, yeah, that's why I, I believe it is necessary to conduct this automatic process because if you just go through all those videos, it, will, it might take you forever like to detect all those because we only have five. And uh, yeah, uh, so this is uh, an example of an interaction. You can see this is a stop sign controlled intersection and the vehicle stopped for this pedestrian. And uh, here is the, uh, these five locations is uh, are where the AV encountered pedestrians or bicyclists. And uh, then after we have these encounters, we kind of divided the those encounters into a time sequence. So basically, we divide, uh, we define two time steps, T sub one and T sub two. T sub one represents the time when we first detected this uh, VRU or this person or bicyclist. T sub two represents the time we last, we lastly detected this person. And then we want to, you know, uh, we use the T, T sub one minus five seconds as uh, the let's say pre in country and the T sub two minus five, I'm sorry, there should be a plus, plus five seconds as let's say after in country, because we are curious, we were curious about the behavior of the AV before and after interacting with the, the VRU. That's why we kind of extended the time from T sub one and the T sub two. So basically we, then we define three stage. So from the this stage, we call it before encountering, and uh, from T sub one to T sub two, we call it you know during uh, interacting, and after T sub two, we call it after interacting. And uh, we you we mainly use the, the speed of the AV to describe the AV's behavior while you're interacting with the VRUs. So for those five uh, encountering events. The average duration is 18 seconds, which means that those, uh, this is the time the AV spent while interacting with VRUs. And uh, some conclusions or you know findings we have found from this data is that the AV generally has a higher speed before the event than during and after the event because the AV will usually you know break after it detects a pedestrian, for example. For this event, the before AV encountered the pedestrian, the mean speed was like nine MP, uh, nine miles per hour. But after that, you can see it uh, dramatically decreased after it encountered the pedestrian. Even after, you know, it encountered the pedestrian, the speed was still pretty low. 
And uh, the second finding is that the AV has a relatively high uh, the speed uh, variance or like the standard deviation of the speed while interacting with VRUs. For example, here, you can see it has two point, uh, the standard deviation of the speed was around 2.4 and which was much higher than before interacting with the pedestrian because while the AV is interacting with the pedestrian, it constantly adjusted its speed to in while interacting with this uh, pedestrian. That's why you will see a higher stand deviation of speed. And we've then kind of visualized the speed of the AV uh, in those five events. And uh, the red dashed line here represents the start of the encounter and uh, the end represented by the a green dotted line. And uh, some, you know, a general pattern you can find from here is that after the AV encounters the VRU, is the, the speed of the AV will start to drop like very, I would say dramatically. And it usually takes the AV three to five seconds to reach a speed around zero mile per hour. And while the AV is, uh, you know, uh, interacting with values, so the area between uh, red and the green, you can see the speed is almost always around zero, right? Because it's very cautious while the AV is interacting with the pedestrian or with the bicyclists. And you can see some change like in the event four, like AV constantly adjusts its speed while the AV is interacting with the very you. That's why, you know, you can see the AV has a higher stand deviation of speed during this stage. And then after it finish the you know, uh, it finished interacting with the pedestrian or the bicyclist, it's, it's uh, the speed of the AV gradually recovered. But as you can see, it usually takes the AV much longer time to recover to let's say a normal or like a higher speed after the interaction, because usually like after the red, uh, I'm sorry, after the green dotted line, you can see still the speed of the AV is quite low, even after let's say 10 seconds or five seconds. So uh, we want to you know, explain why, and uh, then we want to investigate two of those events to help us understand why. So for example, for this interaction, so what happened was that the AV stopped and uh, then the bicyclist, like uh, he was uh, driving on the street and uh, he drove around and then, the AV, after the bicyclist uh, left, the AV stopped for additional time because the situation is that uh, the driving condition here was a little bit complicated. So AV needed extra time to check the surrounding environments to make sure there are no other vehicles or other real use. Then the AV started to drive again. So that's why, as you can see, after the green dotted line, maybe this is like 11 seconds. The AV took much more time to recover to a normal speed or like to resume driving normally. So that's what we found in this event. And for this event, so basically this is a stop sign controlled uh, intersection and uh, the AV stopped when a pedestrian was crossing the street and then the AV started to make a right turn. And as you can see, after, uh, so this is like uh, the AV starts to, the AV starts to increasing its speed after the 15 seconds while the AV was interacting with the pedestrian. Why was that? Because the pedestrian then later, this person went to the left side of the AV, but the AV was going to make a right turn. That's why it detects that there is no pedestrian on the on its path. So that's why even during, although we can still see the pedestrian in the camera, but there's no, let's say, potential conflict between the AV and the pedestrian. That's why you can see the AV, this time it took the AV much less time since no other vehicles were near the intersection and uh, were not on the path of the turning. So those are some you know, detailed explanations we found in those five events to explain why the AV you know, had such behavior. So here are some conclusions or findings from this study. 
So first, AV is particular cultures while interacting with VR use. As we can see, it usually had a speed near zero while it is interacting with VR use. Second, the AV usually has a relatively high speed before the interaction. And then the speed of the AV drops rapidly after interacting with VR use. And after that, it gradually increases after finishing the interaction, but usually with a, with a much smaller acceleration because it's still pretty cautious even after interacting with VR use. And uh, lastly, the AV has a relatively higher stand deviation speed or volatility of speed while interacting with VR use, suggested by that the high stand deviation of speed while interacting with the VR use. This means that AV constantly adjusted its speed while interacting with VR use. So in the future, I think additional studies should be conducted to collect more data in various scenarios, because I would say this was on two, this was conducted using two loop routes, and we can certainly extend it to other locations and you know areas, and we can find better ways to detect road users and uh, additional metrics for evaluating AVS performance. Here we mainly used different uh, statistical descriptive, uh, descriptives about speed, but maybe we can use acceleration or other values, you know, metrics to evaluate AVS performance. And uh, lastly, I would like to uh, thank the contribution of the team and uh, you know acknowledge their support and uh, here are our team members and uh, if you have any questions or comments please feel free to reach out to us thank you thank you very much Paul. um i have a question about um the automation were you able sure. was it a package that you you received um did you have a part in designing it? And um, do you, were you able to change any settings within the automation? Yeah, sure, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, it was like uh, the vehicle came kind of, let's say, pre-packaged. So like uh, mm -hmm. the company provided the AV was a prone and they kind of, I think they have their uh, control algorithms and the mm -hmm. detection algorithm, everything packaged. We were not able to kind of uh, change anything of the vehicle. So uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of uh, already programmed by the manufacturer, which is a pro. Yeah, a lot of them, mm -hmm. a lot of manufacturers and companies, um, their, their automation comes as a black box. And that's why I was asking. Yeah, exactly. I think it would be really nice, right? If they can, I think at least share like what types of uh, you know uh algorithms or like methods they are using in the decision making process, right? Then we can have a better understanding because all those let's say speed or acceleration of these AVs was kind of dependent on those control algorithms, and if we know what kinds of algorithms they are using, we can make certain suggestions. For example, like, oh, you know, the AV always decelerates very, let's say, uh, rapidly, like mm -hmm. because of you are using this control logic. So if we, you can change to another logic, maybe, you know, it will make the driving, the experience much better. So yeah, I, I, I wish they can share this with us, mm -hmm. but yeah, unfortunately they didn't. Yeah. So I, I want to uh, encourage any other attendee who would like to ask questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask the question or uh, type it in the chat and you can read it out. I had another question about uh -huh. um, a potential future work and perhaps, um, so I see the there weren't very many other road users in, in these, it would completely understandable, you're, you know, you've got to keep people safe. But what made me curious about the, the different types of um, it's acceleration and, and pausing mm -hmm. like its behavior for and after was um, if there were multiple other road users in, oh, yeah. in the scene or in the scenario where um, would another AV, like another shuttle or mm -hmm. a human driver, um, how, would they understand the the actions and behaviors of this AV 
Do you have a sense of that or do you have plans to look at something like that? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's more like I think it's a really uh interesting research topic of like how other road users they react to the behavior of AV, right? Like uh I think potentially this can be done because uh we have the camera data. So if we can detect other vehicles and uh, kind of to extract the dynamics of those vehicles, then we can investigate oh how how do those you know vehicles react when they see the AVs, let's say making a stop or the AVs accelerating. Yeah, I think that that that's very good suggestion okay. and I, I I think it's potentially doable. <laughs> <laughs> well I was just curious because I I uh about your presentation and your results made me curious about that. Um the other thing that may that I was curious about while you're presenting mm -hmm. is the potential for controlled close track where you could um uh, more understand how the AV might deal with multiple other road users. Um, but yeah. it, would, it would require a close track where you were setting the scenes. Um, and I'm not I'm not trying to tell you <laughs> what you should do next. I'm just saying that I think this is very interesting and that it sparked questions means it's good research, right? Um, yeah, yeah, like what would you. happen yeah. next? Uh -huh. What would happen? This is great. What would happen if? Um, yeah, I totally other, agree. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions that anyone would like to ask? I don't see anyone typing. Let me make sure of that. And then, um, no, I don't see anyone typing mm -hmm. and no one's unmuted. So I want to thank you very much for taking your time to tell us about the study. And thank you for doing uh, some research with SaferSoon. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, and thank you for uh, coming on in the summer afternoon and telling us about your study. Yeah, thank you, Don, for setting up the webinar and, you know, all the help through the project. My pleasure. Okay, and with that, I'll go ahead and end and mm -hmm. let you get on with the day. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.